My name is Ratna Bhavaraj Hisranka. I am uh, an associate professor and uh, chief of neuromuscular at uh, UT Health San Antonio. I have been there for 13 years and I um, trained at University of North Carolina under Dr. Chip Howard. Um, I have been exposed to my senior since uh, my fellowship uh, working with Dr. Howard and that's been one of my special interests. So I have seen uh, patients with my senior um, all along my neuromuscular career. Um, and uh, it's been exciting to be in that myasthenia area right now with all the um, newer therapies that are coming up and newer diagnostics. Myasthenia is an autoimmune condition. Um, it is um, considered a, a, um, a disorder where the nerve is fine, the muscle is fine, but the communication is impaired because of uh, autoimmune antibodies. Um, and um, yeah, this is um, it has shown to affect the quality of life and the functionality of patients who can be anywhere from teens to 80s or 90 year olds. So it can um, affect the wide spectrum of the people in all ethnicities and all all races and all age groups, uh, both men and women, so it has been shown to be a burden of disease um, is high. Over the years we've seen that there are delays in diagnosis up to six months uh, in some of these patients and I think the diagnosis is sometimes straightforward when they are antibody positive or if they have classic presentations um, but sometimes when they are antibody negative or they have atypical presentations um, it gets harder to diagnose um, initially and they have to see multiple physicians before um, they get the diagnosis. So um, I um, am presenting about some of the data that I was part of a research trial that is looking at the antibody negative patients. Um, this was part of the uh, ADAPT and the ADAPT Plus trial where we were looking at um, Fgartijumad, um, which is an FCRN inhibitor. Um, and they were a small proportion of patients uh, who are seronegative, or about 38 patients in this open label extension had um, 38 patients um, uh, getting subcutaneous Fgartijumad and we saw that um, these patients did respond to myasthenia with le at least a two to um, more than two point improvement in their myasthenia gravis activities of daily living score and also um, about 20% of them, uh, close to 20% of them had what we call minimal symptom expression which is uh, AMG ADL of 0 to 1 or low amount of symptom activity uh, after treatment um, from anywhere from 1 to 9 cycles of this medication. So the findings were um, that um, this, pa this medication was very well tolerated um, with no serious adverse effects in these patient population who are seronegative um, and the response uh, was robust and it persisted uh, after multiple um, uh, treatment periods um, and um, they did have what we call minimal symptom expression in some of these patients up to 20% of the time. Take home message um, I would say is um, seronegative patients are out there um, and we don't have a lot of um, treatment opportunities uh, because there are not a lot of approved therapies or not any approved therapies. Um, um, for those patients and they do have a significant um, um, myasthenia presentation very similar to the seropositives so we need to kind of look at them and provide some newer therapies that are upcoming um, to be for them to be able to use. Broadly, there are ocular or generalized myasthenia um, based on the area of involvement. Um, if uh, in generalized they have you know, bulbar and limb involvement, but in ocular there's purely eye involvement. But when you also um, look at the antibody status, there are different versions. There are seropositive myasthenics and seronegative myasthenics. And in seropositive, we can um, categorize them based on the antibody we see, which is um, predominantly, we know three different antibodies, acetylcholine receptor antibodies, uh, musk antibodies, and LRP4 antibodies. As I said before, it's an exciting time in myasthenia. There's been a lot of focus and um, newer therapies that are available in the antibody positive patients so we do not want to forget the antibody negative and um, most of the studies have been on antibody positive 
generalized, so we have these, um, if I can say, the stepchilds or the uh, seronegatives and the ocular. We need more um, innovation in that area also. Um, and I think with the newer therapies comes um, the uh, cost of care um, and access to these, some of these newer therapies. So as a physician and as, you know, in the, in, as association members like the, uh, the, the neuromuscular uh, group, uh, we need to come up with some ways that we can provide um, these newer medications um, you know to everybody ir irrespective of whether they can afford it or not you know I think that's important for access um, to you know just diagnosis but access to the m treatments that are available